Hi guys, so in this short video I want to talk about the organisation theory of Carl Weick. Weick is an American professor, a social psychologist, um, a communication theorist and an organisation theorist. One of the, he is one of the most influential organisation theorists of recent times. His work spanning from the late 1970s through to the um, 1990s and early 2000s have been highly influential in setting the tone for organisation theory. Vike's often associated with an idea called sense-making, um, which is loosely defined a uh, social practice through which groups of people define and give meaning to their environment and their own actions, allowing them to coordinate what they're doing. Vike's interest in sense-making, though, led him to develop a very specific view on organisations and in his 1995 book Sense Making and Organisations the third chapter is devoted to trying to set out a theory of organisations which would support a sense making perspective. That's to say a theory of organisations which is built around explaining and understanding organisations as sense-making machines, as social forms which do sense-making, which is different from other ways of thinking about organisations. You know, classic, linear or traditional models of organisations thought about them as rational systems which try to achieve some specific objective. Um, they might see them as ordered social structures which define roles, behaviours and attitudes what might be called natural systems perspectives on organisations, and these are terms Vike uses, would see organisations emerging spontaneously out of some sort of natural element of the environment. So a Freudian view of organisations might be a natural systems perspective, which says an organisation emerges out of people's inbuilt natural needs and instincts. Vike said he preferred a different view of organisations, not to necessarily say the others were wrong, but that there was something they missed out, something important that they missed out. At one point he wrote that the view of organisations as a, as a thing, as a, as a concrete thing, is, is a myth. Because actually organisations and organisational life is messy, chaotic, dynamic, changing, consistent, it's a flows of experiences, um, time can go slow and fast in organisations, roles can switch and change, the meaning of roles and activities and values and behaviours can all switch and change. And actually, when we focus on those things in a static set of static points in time, like a rational system or a natural system, we sort of miss something really important about organisations. So for Vike, an organisation has to be seen as being an adaptive thing a thing which is able to draw in different elements within its environment, to shape its environment and to be shaped by its environment. So this is the first point of his organisation theory. Organisations are open systems or adaptive to change. They're capable of change and they're capable of changing themselves. And in so doing, they can have an effect on their environment and the world around them. Bikes of people in organisations often forget this power that they have a um, an ability to shape their organize, their environment, not just to shape it in terms of shaping elements of its features, but also literally to, to redesign its environment. So an example might be universities might shift from thinking about teaching students to satisfying consumers. And that's a choice that universities and university leaders have made. And then when they start thinking in those terms, the idea of student choice then becomes really important important and starts to structure and define and constrain what people in universities do. This is an example for Vike of the ways that organisations can shape their environment and shape the very form of their environment. So that's the first part of his organisation theory. We need to think of organisations as adaptive social forms. And the second part of his organisation theory is almost to explain how that adaption works. And he said the way that adaption works is by providing a very specific type of communication. Vic argues that organisations allow humans to communicate in a very specific way, which 
they couldn't do or would find very difficult to do. They didn't have this thing called an organisation. And this way of communicating for Vike is precisely what, all, what allows organisations to be adaptive, to change, to shift. So to illustrate this, he distinguishes between intra-subjective meaning, inter-subjective meaning, generic meaning, and extra-subjective meaning. So really broadly defined, intra-subjective meaning is what something means for me, my own belief, my own experiences that I might be able to explain or describe to somebody else, but they can never really grasp what something means for me. Inter-subjective meaning emerges between one or more two or more people in their interactions. So some theorists might call this social organisation, but you know, when you get two people together, they start to come up with shared ways of talking, shared ways of acting, shared ideas, shared concepts that just make sense to them. They're tied to the two people. So this is intersubjective meaning. Then you can have generic subjective meaning, which doesn't rely on the people and which way you get a concept that can apply to lots of different people. So it can accommodate new people coming into a, into a setting. So an example here would be organisational roles, like being a lecturer or a teacher or an, account, an accountant. This is something which exists not because of the interactions of two people, but any two people or more can fulfil that role. And knowing that somebody is an accountant has meaning for people. This is generic subjectivity. And then finally you have extra subjectivity which exists even beyond that generic sense and it's where you have ideas that just exist on their own so like the example that gives is mathematics just exists it doesn't rely on people at all Vike's argument is that organizations operate as bridges between the inter and the generic meaning so organizations are adaptive because they allow groups of people to create their own meaning, their own sense, as he would call it. But then what organisations can do is they can take that intersubjective meaning and turn it into generic meaning, allowing new people to enter a conversation and to occupy a, a role that makes sense to them, allowing new people to enter a conversation and understand the terms and words that are used. So Vike says you, in organisations you get this interplay between freedom or autonomy of groups of people to shape and make their own meaning and the control and efficiency of generic meaning where you take something that somebody's already made sense of and then you use it to structure people's activities and this is Reich's theory of organizations so the organizations are adaptive because they allow intersubjective meaning and they can take that intersubjective meaning and turn it into generic meaning which allow new individuals to participate in interactions in a way that doesn't happen unless you had on some kind of an organisation. So Vike says the basic function, the basic focus of organisations then is to both allow people the freedom to create their own meaning, but also to try to mitigate against any loss of meaning or freedom that occurs when you try to get the efficiency of generic meaning. And this is Vike's basic organisation theory. Put very simply, it's the idea that organisations are adaptive social forms that facilitate a very specific and unique type of communication. So most of Vike's research then, and most of his theory, is on this concept of sense making, which for Vike is the process through which meaning goes from the intersubjective to the generic. Sense making for Vike is a way that groups of people create meaningful objects out of their environment that they can do stuff with. And the important point for Vike is those meaningful objects don't have to be true or realistic or accurate. They just have to let people in organisations do things. So a famous example he gives is of some soldiers who found themselves in, I think, the Alps or the Pyrenees, whichever one it was. They had a map of the other mountain range, but they still used that map to get home safely. Like I said, it wasn't the case that they needed the right map, they just needed a map. Because once they had a map, they had this object, this sense, we're on a mountain range, here's the map, we're going to follow it. Then they could start doing stuff. 
And as soon as they started doing stuff, generating intersubjective meaning, they then could start to structure their environment through generic meaning. So you could find out, find water, because water runs down here, we can see on this map. And then they could get back home. So this for Vike is what organisations do. They allow this unique form of meaning to emerge between groups of people that allow them to do stuff. Vike calls this sense making and a lot of his research has been exploring sense making in action and sense making practice but the foundation of it is his very particular view of organizations as adaptive social forms that facilitate specific types of communication hopefully that makes sense it is quite confusing it's also worth pointing out vike's work is um, informed by a couple of really interesting features that you kind of need to understand to make sense of it first is his belief that Organisations are complex, and Veit uses this term repeatedly in his work, which is requisite variety. And what that means is, if you're describing a complex thing, you need to have complex ways, theories, to understand them. So Veit was not that supportive of simplifying organisations. He wanted to complicate them because he thought they were complicated. The example I would give here is, you know, if you've got a high resolution camera, you can take a picture of something in really fine grained detail and see all the intricacies. Wyke's concern with a lot of organisation theory was that it was a really low resolution camera that just had very simple blobs or pixels. Wyke said they didn't give you a particularly accurate picture of what happens in organisations. So his work's difficult to read because he's trying to make it complicated. Or not necessarily make it complicated, he believes it is complicated. The next reason Reich's work it can be difficult is because he was also kind of hostile to the idea of having an organisation theory. He really wants to theorise sense-making. So he comes at his, his writing from two different directions. First, he wants to understand sense-making, but he also wants to understand organisations through sense-making. And this means he has to have some kind of organisation theory or idea about organisations. So he's kind of being pushed and pulled in two directions. On the one hand, he wants to say something about organisations, and on the other hand, he wants to say something about sense-making, and he does both at the same time. But you'll find a lot of commentators focus on his work on sense-making, and don't really think about his underlying theory of organisations. And Veik himself kind of supports that by never really clearly saying what his theory of organisations are. So in his text, he describes his view as a composite view or as a framework, but explicitly says he doesn't think it is a theory. Personally, I would disagree. I think he's being a bit disingenuous and that he does have a clear theory of organisations. But hey, that's just me. I'm not Carl Weick. I'm not as, as, as successful an academic as him. And I'm sure I'm not paid as much as he is. But that doesn't mean I'm wrong. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that's useful. Hopefully that's interesting. If you've got any questions or comments, um, leave me a like, write them below, and I'll get back to you. And if you are Carl Vike and you want to uh, send me some money or tell me why I'm wrong, just get in touch.